just a minute. With all these connect devices, you're still bound to wires, unfortunately. What I'm setting up right here is, uh, is my product. It's called Homey. And what you are seeing is the first prototype. So you're the first crowd to, uh, to see it in real life. Is it safe distance? <laughs> uh, you mean it's going to explode? Or? <laughs> This was a Kickstarter campaign, wasn't it? I, th I think you had a, yeah. a good deal of success with this. Was this last year? Yeah, it was uh, last June we finished our Kickstarter campaign. I will also uh, talk about that in my presentation. In which case, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, I'll just uh, start probably. Still time during the setup. But All right, this, uh, this uh, thing is booting, so I can start my presentation already. Uh, do I have a clicker? This one, yeah. All right, thank you for having me. Um, I'll just start by uh, telling who I am. I'm Emil, I'm from, uh, from Holland, and I, uh, I was a student, and now I'm an uh, entrepreneur, as they call it. Um, and I'm working full-time on uh, developing Homey, it's our first product. And the kind of person I am is I'm a kind of a social geek, actually. I like to explore um, technology, I can really go in-depth and build stuff and explore algorithms, interfaces. But I also like to think about the psychology part of it. So, how do people work with technology, how do they interact? When I see my mom struggling to turn on their, uh, the, the tuner to find their favorite radio station and just gives up after 15 minutes, those are the kind of problems I really want to solve. So we're here at a conference about Internet of Things. It's a really broad term, uh, kind of a buzzword actually, if you ask me. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the Internet of Things in your home. So I'm uh, all about home automation. And in your home, a lot of devices are um, being bought recently. So everything is going to be connected. We're, we're a little bit over evolving actually, like your coffee machine is getting Bluetooth because you know the coffee is good, so what, what's next? Um, the problem there, however, is there's no standard. And when there's no standard, there's no general interface. Well, maybe you know uh, this comic, it's by uh, XKCD. Um, the current situation, there are 14 competing standards. Then a few bright guys think, oh, that's, that's terrible, we should create a totally new standard that combines all the standards together and solves the problem. And then there are 15 competing standards. And that's a little bit happening right now, because if you look at the, the, only the, the wireless spectrum already in your home, there are so many standards uh, today, and they don't cooperate at all. And they're probably never going to cooperate at all, because uh, there are companies behind them who have no interest in combining them whatsoever, because they all want to create their own little ecosystem. So you buy one of their devices then, the next device you're going to buy, which might be terrible, but must be theirs because it doesn't work together otherwise. So, what's happening here? A lot of uh, companies, also startups, are creating solutions to those kind of problems. But they're all creating apps. And the problem with apps is they only connect with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So you're still limited to the high-end range of devices, so the, the Philips Hue's and the Sonos speakers. So basically using APIs that you know someone with a little bit of program experience can also create, and that, that's not really rocket science. So the current problem right now is when I get home, for example, it's in dark, it's, it's in a dark house, um, it's cold, and I grab my phone to turn on the lights. Oh shit, my phone is dead, my battery is dead. You know that that's one problem. If it isn't that, then I have to unlock my phone, go to the right app, find my light, and then turn the light on. You know that's that's not really an improvement over getting home and flipping a button. But when you're on the couch, you can flip the button. So there, there's a problem here. Uh, there's no best solution. Something that we envision, or my company envisions, uh, is that you can just talk to your home. You get home and say, hey, I'm home. Poof, lights turns on. Do you want to uh, listen to some music? Yeah, I like some, uh, some classical music. And then it flows classical music to your speakers. That's what we're creating with our product. But before I'm going to tell you more about it, a little bit of history. That's, that's cool, because then you know how it uh, came to existence. Um, I'm an incredibly lazy person, like really incredibly lazy, because I was lying in bed and the lights were still turned on and I couldn't reach the light button. So I had two options, I had to stand up to flip the light or I had to sleep with the light on. But you know, <laughs> both were actually terrible. And that's when I thought, I just wanna say to my house, hey, like computer, uh, turn the lights uh, off or something like that, a little bit of like Star Trek. So next day I prototyped a little bit, bought an Arduino. <laughs> bought uh, really cheap uh, socket switches, uh, you know, just, just hacked it up together. And then uh, using uh, speech recognition by Microsoft, which was terrible, and a uh, Kinect, and it kind of worked, you know? So I could say basic commands like computer lights off. And that worked, and that was really fun. Um, next thing, 
uh, people came to my place and they said, this is really cool, I really want this. Could you uh, also make this in my home? And I was like, no, no, no way, it's way too hacky, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I wrote a blog about it and it was insanely popular. It was on a Dutch uh, a technology website. It got over 70,000 views or something, which was incredibly there. Um, so that got me thinking, ah, maybe there is a market in the, uh, in the, the home automation sector. Um, uh, this was a project at my university where we like evolved the project further. Then we wrote a business plan about it, which we also pitched on the university, and we won that competition. And that got me thinking, maybe we should do something with this. And that's when we came to Homey. I started the company with a friend of mine, um, and we chose, okay, we're going to do a Kickstarter campaign because we need funds, it's hardware. Um, and if we succeed, we're going to stop our studies and we're going to go this, do this full time. And we succeeded, as you can see. It was uh, quite a success, um, at least for the Netherlands speaking. It's harder when you uh, do it in euros. And this is how it works. Hey homie, I want to watch Star Trek. Would you like subtitles with that? Yes, subtitles please. So you basically talk to it and it controls everything in your home. And it doesn't matter which kind of brand of device you have, it just works with it. How do we do that? Well, um, I'll, I'll tell about that a little bit later. This is the first prototype. This was what you saw in the Kickstarter video. It's just Raspberry Pi with some uh, Chinese modules hacked together. But hey, it brought us 200,000 uh, euros, so don't, don't judge it. So we're working with speech, and speech is a really good interface. You know why? You don't have to traverse a structure. If you are looking for a light, for example, you have to go to lights, uh, living room, that light. And now I can just say, oh, we turn the lights in the living room off. It's really natural for people to traverse in that direction, and it doesn't feel like they're putting in effort. Um, for the speech, we're using uh, technology that's, uh, of course, also used by Google, for example, for the OK Google, and it streams to the cloud to um, analyze it there. So we're using state of the art, it's quite good. And if you are not at home, you can just use an app, which combines all your devices together. You, can, you might say, yeah, that some other guys did that, that's true, but we have uh, the hardware as well and the speed, so I think we have a competitive advantage, uh, advantage here. This is how you connect stuff together. And I was really laughing uh, when the panel was discussing about if this, then that. Uh, we did the same, but then in a, well, really smooth interaction, I hope. My mother can use it, so uh, I guess it works. What's happening here, uh, someone com comes home, then you uh, can say, okay, uh, my Chromecast should uh, show a fireplace. And then I can say, turn, uh, turn a light on to a specific color. And it doesn't matter which light it is. It can be a, a Livix, a Philips Hue, or a, a, the, the cheap socket switch light. It doesn't really matter. Homey doesn't care. And then, of course, to totally complete it, you can let him speak and say, welcome home. And then it grabs your name. So you have even a variable structure in there, which is really playful. So this is how we wire things together. You can even share this with your friends. So that's how we are going to you know, make it happen. You can even uh, make jokes with this. So when Justin Bieber's song uh, starts playing, you just automatically skip it and say, dude, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> um, how is everything going to be supported? Well, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, we don't believe in uh, companies locking everything together. Uh, so we made Homey as an open platform, so everyone can develop apps for it. Really simple in JavaScript. For example, in this example, you can see uh, that if a friend of mine, Mike, comes home, the Star Wars Imperial March tune starts playing, and he says, welcome home, Mike. Well, it's dum dum. <laughs> so you can even uh, do practical jokes with it. But I just want to illustrate how easy it is to, to make apps with this. So developers are going to make apps, publish them in our app store. We already, that's the advantage of a Kickstarter. We have a lot of apps already. Um, being developed. So for example, hey Omi, when does my next train to Amsterdam leave? And you get just an answer. So um, we really want to uh, make this community alive and try to you know, become the home of the center of your home. So I'm uh, short on time, so summarized. What is Homey? You can talk to your home. It connects with everything, brand independent because it's an open structure. If there's not support, you can write it yourself. You can ask someone else to do it for you. Uh, you can even, for example, we, we are uh, going to pay developers to make apps for them. And it's an open platform, so everyone can enjoy it. Because I don't think the Internet of Things is ever going to be uh, a, a reality as we see it if there uh, isn't a standard. There's never going to be a standard, so there has to be something that's going to wire it together. But it should be an open platform. 
Are there any questions? Just hold on. Uh, I hope my demo is going to work because it just wired everything together, so I haven't <laughs> tested it yet. But uh, let's see. Should be turned on right now. Hey. Now it's 11 degrees. Fair. Okay, that worked. Maybe you can hear it. Hey, homie. Hey, homie. Play music by Armin van Buren. I'm not sure if the microphone is disturbing. Let's just hope it works. Otherwise, uh, I call the demo effect. <laughs> ah. So it finds my Sonos speaker. It's a search on Spotify for Armin van Buren, which is my favorite DJ. And then it sends it to the Sonos speaker. This, this is a really uh, quick example. We can do anything with it, like homie, red lights, homie, um, turn up the heating in the living room. Uh, it's so easy, it's really natural to do so. You can even pre-order it right now on uh, heyhomie.com. <laughs> but uh, are there any questions? What does it cost? 2.99 euros. And you can even buy more so you can hook them together. One in your living room, one in your bedroom. Another question over there, Sophie. Um, what happens if you lose internet? Um, then you can use it locally if your smartphone is on the same Wi-Fi network. You can talk to it, of course. Um, so that's like the fallback option. And it, it can even say, hey, I, I have no internet connection. But somehow, I suppose that most people still would have internet connection. And your, your flows, for example, like your scenarios you created, will still work if they don't require internet, of course. Uh, so switching lights and stuff, that, that's all local. So that will still work. Yep, with a question at the front and somewhere else as well. Terrific. Um, I was just wondering um, if you could say what market you're um, aiming to hit at the moment. Is it, because um, obviously you need to have a, I guess, a level of um, competence with code um, to be able to hook up, you know, even the light, the light function. Um, so I was just wondering how you sort of, how you're pitching that. Okay, maybe I wasn't clear. Um, you don't need to be able to code to use it. I really designed this for my mom, so she can use it. But if you want to code for it, it's possible. So it's a little bit like a smartphone. You know, you can download apps, you can use them. But if you want to create one yourself, then you should be able to code. But the the flow editor, the, which where you saw the the blocks being dragged, uh, that's something I believe everyone uh, should should be able to do. That's okay, answer, two time for two more questions. You. I was just going to ask about sort of the, um, uh, I suppose, the semantics of the, the, the commands you put into it, whether you actually have to follow the flow that you put together with the block editor. No, 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 they, they're separate. So because they're of, if you say turn off the lights in the living room, mm -hmm. will it still understand that as well as turn the lights in the living room off? Yeah, so we find living room in your sentence, we yeah. find lights and off, uh, and then it searches for, oh, living room, I know that, that's a room in your home. Then uh -huh. it searches for all your lights, which are uh, placed in the living room, and then it sends to all the, those lights that could be turned off, turn off. So basically, we have a, a database of devices with capabilities. So uh, a U light could change from color. So if you say, homie, red lights in the living room, then it finds all your devices. <laughs> then it finds all your devices in the living room that can change color, and then will change color to whatever you said. Thank you. I found a question. So I know you're not the only ones um, are doing this with voice. Uh, recognition using the cloud, but can you explain a little bit why it's not uh, uh, possible to do it on the machine? Because it seems it slows things down a little bit. Uh, that's true, but um, local speech recognition is just terrible. If you uh, uh, call in your car, for example, well, did it ever work for you? Um, I really hope that in the next few years we can, like, you know, uh, get out with the cloud and put a chip or something in our in our device uh, that makes it possible. But I don't believe in that. And for example, if I say play music by Armin van Buren, Armin van Buren um, is dynamic and that is uh, like time dependent. So that's a, that's a DJ that might have, might didn't exist the year before. So somewhere you need a dictionary of uh, things that change. So yeah, and, and I think it's not really that of a problem because everything is going online uh, constantly anyway. Especially with this device, you know, it's power plug, so uh, it does always work. Okay, well, uh, listen, it's been really good to see it. Uh, is it listening to me now? The I lights think. are flashing a different color. 
I'm a bit worried now. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Homie. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much also to Emil. Thank you very much.